Hello, hello everyone! Today I will be featuring the Tier 6 uh, Soviet Premium, the Molotov. Uh, I've had a fair amount of requests for this ship and since Ranked is coming up I decided to feature a game. Now this is Tier 8 matchmaking, not really the most optimal of course, um, you do end up facing this every now and then and I decided to go with the worst case scenario which is where you end up facing not just Tier 8 battleships but also a Tier 8 carrier. Now, the first thing you should know about the Molotov as a ship is that the ship, the hull itself, is complete garbage. There is really no, no kind way of describing the Molotov hull. Uh, the turning circle is abysmal. 860 meter turning circle, it turns like an absolute brick. The HP pool is honestly pretty abysmal as well. 28.4k health. That's really not a lot of health. Uh, you kind of compete with the Nuremberg of the worst health. Nuremberg has like 27k or something. And then you compare it to Cleveland, which sits at 35.4, which is literally 6k more than um, the Molotov has. That's a pretty damn big difference. Uh, the AA, abysmal. Armor, abysmal. So, as a hull, as a hull, as a ship itself, uh, the Molotov is pretty goddamn garbage. However, it has one redeeming factor, and that is, of course, the guns. The Molotov guns are excellent. They are straight up excellent. They are the Tier 9 Donskoy guns, which means they not only are they 180mm, but they are also rail guns. Extremely accurate. The range is only 15.5, I mean you can increase it with the spotter plane, but they are very accurate and overall very very strong. So even though the hull itself is complete garbage, the guns are so good that overall they make the ship a quite a strong ship. Now it of course suffers being up tiered like all ships do, um, and in general you won't, even when you're low tier in the ship you want to avoid being shot at. That's always going to be a priority. You don't want to be shot at by anything, but high tier, when you end up against tier 8 battleships and such, you need to be especially careful, because they can pin you from pretty much anywhere, and you shouldn't count on being able to angle or bounce or anything like that. The Molotov is very much an avoidance ship, which you focus on not being hit in. Uh, and of course, that's made slightly more difficult by the fact that the turning circle is 860 meters. So in general, when it comes to fighting battleships, you want to maintain your distance as I'm doing here. The HE, however, is quite good. Um, you got a base HE pen of 30 millimeters, and uh, you have a fairly decent fire starting uh, capacity. Uh, I, of course, this is a new captain since I'm, play I'm playing on my Russian account, and I literally bought this Molotov to have a fun ship to play in the Russian rank and uh, to be able to do some PvE scenarios uh, with the tier 6 ship, so I bought myself a Molotov, it was on sale I think. Ultimately though, uh, I, that's the ultimate reason why I bought this ship, so I only have an 8 point captain, so I have priority target, I have adrenaline rush, and I have demolition expert. I don't have even have concealment expert yet, so my concealment is pretty terrible at 12.7 I think. So obviously that's going to make it a bit more challenging since the Molotov, uh, like all cruisers, benefit greatly from having a better captain that gives concealment expert. But that's not a problem, I can work around this. Bismarck, of course, my priority target here. Uh, I need to get rid of him since he's a very, very scary threat and he can kind of just steamroll past me if he so wishes. And uh, looking at, well, if you look at the battleships on my team, my two Bismarcks, our two tier 8 battleships, they have gone down to A, which is of course a bit of an issue because there's really nothing that can straight up put up a fight against this Bismarck here, so I'm focusing most of my firepower on this dude here. Note that when he gives broadside, when anything gives broadside in the Molotov, it's usually worth it to switch to AP, because your AP is great. As I said, these are rail guns, and you can really punish broadsiding ships. He didn't give the full broadside as I hoped, but maybe I'll still be able to demonstrate some of this AP damage on this Fairly flat broadside, uh, it was okay, 3.2k. Ultimately though, he looks like he has fire prevention, so we can only get one fire on his superstructure, which is of course unfortunate. I'm trying to wait until he goes behind that island before I turn. However, he does punish me. 6k damage, it wasn't a citadel or anything, it didn't even hit my citadel, but and regardless of my angling, it still penetrated. And that's of course the fundamental issue with this ship, is that um, it's very, very squishy. And I think anyone who brings this ship to ranked 
is going just like with the Nuremberg um, it's going to be quite a challenging experience and any sort of mistakes in this ship just like with the Nuremberg are going to be very heavily punished because you can't afford to get caught broadside you can't afford to have like a smoke fade and you're sitting there broadside you are guaranteed killed by pretty much anything sorry about my phone so that's absolutely going to be a challenge oh it's Bismarck let's see if we can I really want to get rid of this Bismarck we are already down five ships um, whereas we have only killed three of them so we really need to do something here and the Chapai or sorry, the Chapai, the Molotov is especially good against fighting other cruisers thanks to the very strong guns. And uh, when you get rid of higher, higher higher caliber guns like battleship guns, then you can actually actually make use of the turret placement, which allows the Molotov to use six guns in the front while being angled, or well, basically pointing bow and nose in. You can still use six guns, which makes it very strong at pushing in against other cruisers, especially if you face same tier cruisers because there's few that can really do the same, especially with the firepower that the Molotov has. The problem is of course this Bismarck, and it looks like he's finally being dealt with. So with the Bismarck deleted, now I can finally turn around and finally I can start pushing into this northern flank and maybe start to have a bigger impact than just kiting around. Now my damage isn't per se that bad considering uh, the Bismarck has me constantly pushing me away. I have managed to accrue about 49k damage. I mean, not the most impressive, but uh, then again, I've been trying to survive. And that's really uh, fundamentally what you want to do in the early game in the Molotov survival. You want to stay alive as long as possible because the less threats that are around, just like with any cruiser, the less enemies that are around, the higher your impact will be. I think I shot where this feeder was shooting, but I think he's shooting f too much to the right. I think his torps are too much to the right as well. I'm pretty sure this guy is like right next to this island. I'm gonna throw a volley in there. And I do in fact score two hits, so my guess was pretty much on point on where the guy was. It looks like he's gonna sit in the smoke though, so I switched to AP for the Nuremberg, who looks like he's about to come around the corner. As I said, broadsides and cruisers means you wanna use AP. Of course though, the guy does pop up as I have AP loaded, which is very unfortunate and he's angled enough that he bounces five of my shells so that's a bit bad timing twice now the guy has popped up when i had i have had ap loaded so i need to use he and hopefully try to finish him we really we simply really need to get rid of this guy because he can be a real pain in the bum and uh, you know, it's, note that the lander is pushing around my left hand corner, so I am accelerating and I'm pushing closer to this island because I want to keep this island between me and the lander and not give him any chance to shoot. Uh, if you're forced to fight multiple targets, try to use your terrain to your advantage, like I'm doing here. So the only thing that can actually shoot me right now was the Gaede. The Nuremberg is behind an island, the Leander, the Chapai, they're both behind an island, so nothing could actually shoot at me. And only now do, am I ready to fight because I've dealt with him and only now do I allow him to pop to actually see me. I slow down so that the chop I have that's behind the island can't hit me and I angle not just against the Leander but I make sure to angle against the Nuremberg behind me that's fighting the Thargo. Once again you gotta keep constant constant uh, you have to be constantly aware of not your your own positioning, but also the enemy's positioning because this like any squishy cruiser, any sort of broadside can be massively punishing. He smokes up, and this is a bit annoying because I don't really want to push into the smoke with the Chapa ever around. However, the Atago does finish off the Nuremberg, and that means I'm undetected, which I quite like. And I, based on his shells, I shoot into the smoke, and I do score a Citadel. Looks like he's trying to reverse back into the smoke. I wonder, can I even pen his stern? I don't think I can pen his stern. Let's try that. No, nope, just bounces. So that's obviously a no-go, even though the stern is very flat. I was hoping I might get a pen through it, but no such luck. So I'm just going to shoot for his superstructure. This should kill him. Oh, never mind. A lot of zero damage pens. It's His superstructure is saturated, which is why I got a lot of zero damage pens, which is a bit unfortunate. And he actually bounces my shells. Are you serious? Okay, this guy is really, really, really living on borrowed time. I finally get rid of him. That took a lot longer than I wanted. And now with the lander gone, now I can push up and fight this Chapayev. Now the Chapayev is two tiers higher, but as I said, any sort of cruiser that gives you broadside can be punished, and he can be punished hard. Oh, uh, ideally here I would like to use this uh, lander smoke to my advantage, 
to break line of sight and stay undetected. The problem is, of course, these Lexington planes that keep me spotted, trying to get a last volley off as he goes behind the island. Maybe get a citadel on him. No, nope, no such luck. I instantly repair the fire. Now, usually this is not advisable, but first of all, I'm very low HP, and second of all, he's going behind the island himself, which means he cannot shoot at me, so I would kind of be tanking unnecessary damage. Also, if I keep moving at full speed, I should, should be able to maintain um, the island between me and the chop pipe at all times, which means he cannot set a new fire while my repair is on cooldown. So when people ask me when and where you should use uh, repairs, I al always tell them that it's situational. For, for example, in this case, yes, I am less than 7km away from a chop pipe, which is a great fire starter, but thanks to the terrain and being able to break line of sight, uh, it's not that big of an issue. I was still able to use my repair. I'm using my I spot the Pensacola has grounded and is reversing, so I instantly pop my spotter plane and fire off a volley on the Pensacola. Now the fighters instantly kill my spotter plane, but I did get off the one volley that I wanted, and I'm able to kill off the, the grounded Pensacola. So that's something once again, keeping constant eye of your surroundings and keeping constant eye on your minimap, and knowing that you can extend your range when needed with the spotter plane. Trying to get the volley off on the chopper before he slips behind the island. Not the most optimal volley, I would have loved to shoot a bit more in front of him, but uh, I still got a citadel hit that actually broke his engine. And based on the way he's slowing down, I think uh, he doesn't have a repair ready yet, so he's sitting there with a broken engine. This, of course, also allows me to finish off the cap which of course helps our team quite a bit. Uh, our Bismarcks have been constantly sailing around on A, which means they have been quite out of this fight quite a lot, which is usually why I don't like my teammates going to A, because they get it isolates them so much. Comes around the corner, sadly only one Citadel. I think I might have aimed a bit too much in the front. It looks like yes, he repaired his engine. The next volley should kill him, and it does. And I managed to secure a Kraken. And now when he starts a second fire, I can easily repair it. I assume the Otago has defensive AA, so I'm not popping it for him. At least I would assume since, well, I personally highly recommend running a defensive AA on the Otago. So, because if you don't run defensive AA on the Otago, you're opening yourself up to a unnecessary weakness. So, I assume he's running it. Ultimately though, my defensive AA range is really, really pitiful, since I'm running... I don't have AFT, I don't have any of those things, so I have the default AA range which is like 3.5, so I would struggle to even reach him. Based on the amount of damage he took, it looks like he actually didn't have defensive AA, which of course is something I do not recommend, so he's probably going to burn to death, which is a bit unfortunate. But I'm trying to hit the citadel of this Lexington, he is border humping, which makes hitting the waterline a bit tricky since he's kind of moving towards me ever so slightly. But it looks like I'm not really able to get the Citadel hit. If this was a Moskva, I would easily get Citadels here. But it looks like uh, these Molotov guns... Maybe I, I think I might be mis-aiming slightly. I, mean, I am shooting right below his smokestack, but I can't seem to land that perfect spot that gives me a Citadel. And so someone else actually secures the kill. Regardless though, ultimately it was a pretty damn uh, good game for a... well pretty damn good game for a Molotov, especially when you're up tiered. Uh, 124k damage, not that special, but considering the situation, I'll take it. 8 Citadels, a Kraken, a roll, pretty good XP, which is something I of course needed. Base XP wise, 2.4k, once again, um, not perhaps the most impressive numbers, but considering the matchmaking, uh, I will quite happily take it. Detailed report wise, I did eat, end up eating 23k damage. Uh, and of course AP was the biggest issue, but ultimately didn't really eat any unnecessary damage. I avoided mo most of it whenever possible. A 14 minute game and fires did a small chunk, but ultimately most of my damage came from AP. Which is once again the strength of these amazing, amazing guns, which you want to be able to use as much as possible. Which of course means surviving for as long as possible. Credits and XP, well, uh, I got a lot of, uh, this was my daily win, and I'm of course running the Restless Fire since I'm trying to level this captain up so I can get Concealment Expert, since I want to use it in the ranked season, try it out on the Russian ranked, um, but ultimately a nice chunk of captain XP. Anyway, uh, let's move on to my recommended build. I'll also give you guys some tips regarding rank, how you want to build this captain up for a ranked gameplay. Right, as usual, I will start off with the modules. 
Not much to talk about here since you can't uh, change anything since it's a premium ship. However, premium repair, highly recommendable. Oh, well, honestly, if you're running a premium ship, you should run premium damage control. Uh, premium defensive AA because, well, this of course highly depends on uh, carrier frequency in ranked and in in randoms i will always recommend defensive aa because you're too much of a target otherwise in ranked um it will highly depend on how many carriers you see if there are no carriers around then you can probably go hydro uh but ultimately you got to keep in mind that your aa is, AA is pretty much garbage and your maneuverability is complete garbage when it comes to turning circle. So if you don't have defensive AA, you are a very attractive target for a carrier, especially since you have absolutely no torpedo protection. So a drop can very easily wreck you. You also can slot the fighter plane, which I would prefer to use honestly, but so that means you're even more vulnerable to this possibility. So defensive AA to play it safe. If you're seeing absolutely no carriers in rank, then Hydra is a possibility. Upgrade-wise, uh, main armament is mod 1, and honestly, I go for aiming systems mod 1 for the better gun accuracy and faster torpedo traverse. Now, usually I go for AA guns on all my cruisers, but honestly, to be fair, this AA is so pitiful, and even if you slot this mod, you can only get it to, what, 4.2 or so? So, um, it's not never really going to be that useful. Ultimately though, if I did have AFT, for example, on this, on this captain, then I would probably slot this to increase range to 5, at which point I could probably help my buddies out with this defensive AA and actually be somewhat useful. I don't really have the money to slot this at the moment though, since I'm kind of starved for credits. Ultimately though, the wiser choice is AA guns, but as for now, as I'm still leveling and gaining points on these captains, I prefer aiming mod system 1. Damage control system 1. I think actually since this is an IGN ship, steering gears is significantly better. I'm going to sell this. Uh, I just slotted whatever I had available. But steering gears, of course, is sorry, a Russian cruiser, uh, not an IGN ship. Am I drunk? Uh, usually this is the safest choice to go for because losing your steering is very frustrating and overall any hits near the stern can break your steering which is quite common for lower tier ships so this is ultimately a much safer choice followed by of course steering gears because your turning circle is garbage you gotta make sure your rudder shift is at least somewhat decent captain perks wise and the first perk is absolutely priority target Follow it up with AR, that's because your turret traverse is actually really, really good. At 22.5, you don't really need the expert marksman at all. Follow that up with demolition expert, and as you can see, I'm saving up the points, and when I get the points, I will get concealment expert. Now, here comes something very important. If um, you're playing this ship in randoms, 180mm guns benefit quite a lot from IFHE when up-tiered. This is important. For example, the Dawn Squad benefits greatly from IFHE, and that's because it faces T8s, T9s, T10 battleships. But if you're planning on playing the Molotov in ranked, you actually don't want IFHE at all. IFHE is a nerf if you're going to play this ship in ranked. Keep that in mind. If you're going to play Molotov in ranked, do not get IFHE. That's because 180mm guns have a base pen of 30mm. Base HE pen of 30mm without IFHE. So that means these low tier tier 6 battleships, for example, where they're, they're all covered in 25mm armor. Look at this, 25, 25, 25, everything is 25. You can already pin this perfectly fine with the Molotov. So there's absolutely no point for you to get IFHE if you plan on playing the Molotov in rank. So for rank build, IFHE is a straight up nerf. Now, of course, if you face higher tier ships, when they start getting bow to 32mm, that means, for example, random battles, that's where you would benefit from having IFHE. And that's why, for example, the Donskoy benefits greatly from having IFHE. But for ranked uh, Molotov, absolutely do not get the perk. Not worth it. Not worth it at all. So, as a follow-up at this point, uh, if you wanted more follow-up perks for this one, uh, AFT, and then slotting the increased AA range to, well, your AA will still be very, very weak, but at least it will increase the range of these, uh, is it this one? Yeah, it's this one that has some DPS. Increase the range of this to at least somewhat uh, beneficial and you will be able to shoot down some planes. And of course, it will increase your panic radius. So AFT instead of IFHE is much better. Uh, probably follow it up with uh, Vigilance to not get wrecked by Torps as easily. Other possible perks are uh, 
preventive maintenance so you don't lose additional turrets. What else could we possibly get? Mm, maybe faster repair so you can repair those fires faster. That's also a good option. High alert would probably be a pretty good perk. Ultimately though, you probably want to put your high tier perks into AA. Hell, RPF wouldn't necessarily even be a bad choice for rank. Probably not optimal, certainly not optimal, but honestly you don't really have that many important perks because your AA is pretty garbage uh, regardless of how much you spec into it. So going for a full BFT AFT build might not really be that valuable. Uh, I think a safer build would be something like Vigilance AFT, pretty basic. Increase the range, uh, increase uh, torpedo spotting and then get something like high alert for faster repair and maybe preventive maintenance. That would probably be my recommended rank build. Anyway, um, that was my Molotov commentary. I went in a bit on things you could use in ranked since the ranked season is approaching and I know many people will lo would love to use the Molotov in the ranked season. So hence why I decided to go a bit more in depth on things you should and shouldn't spec for the upcoming ranked. Anyway, that was all for me. I hope you guys enjoyed it.